Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian. If it's your first time seeing me, go ahead and like this video because I know you're gonna like it already. Subscribe or turn on those post notifications so you never miss another upload. And if you already are subscribed, hey babies, welcome back. So I hope you guys are doing awesome today. I hope you guys are enjoying this new setup. I guess I'm in my entryway right now. Just, you know, I'm still trying out new spaces in my crib that I like to film in for you guys. But let's go ahead and get into the video today. So I wanted to talk to you guys about the right time for isolation and when to know if it's the right time to isolate yourself. We all know that isolation is such an important part of your spiritual journey. Um, I feel like a lot of times we cut off our friends, we switch from working in a corporate job to opening our own business. You might end up taking some time off away from family or friends, going on a lot of solo trips, spending a lot of time on your own. You know, I feel like the biggest part of the journey is realizing how much of it is about your own individual needs. Um, and how caring for yourself allows you to really be the best version of you, which means you can be the best friend and the best girlfriend, wife, husband, boyfriend, partner, daughter, son, father, mother, parent, you know, it allows you to be the best version of you in all spaces. So I definitely feel like isolation is such an important part of the journey, but isolation can be really, really difficult if it isn't done at the right time. So I definitely wanted to talk to you guys today um, just about knowing if it's the right time to isolate yourself and take a break, or if you're just kind of dealing with some emotional emotions that require the support of your community because we know how important community is support your soul family having people around you that love you and pour into you but there is a time and place for everything and there definitely is a time to be on your own so let's go ahead and get into it so the first thing i would say when it comes to isolation is just knowing that just because you're realizing that there are differences between you and your friends doesn't mean that it's time to isolate yourself you know just because you feel like they might not be serving you right now that doesn't mean that it's time to isolate yourself whenever you realize differences or you realize things aren't working that's the time to reflect and then in that reflection you're able to see do i need to walk away or not sometimes we just realize that something isn't aligning and the first thing we do is cut them off i'm done i'm out Fuck it, I'm dropping out of school, I'm leaving the job, I'm moving out. And after that reflection, you know, hindsight is 2020, after we reflect a little bit, we're able to see, okay, maybe I acted too harshly, or maybe we could have had a conversation, or maybe I could have taken a different route, or maybe there was a different um, you know, path that I could have taken that could have ended me up in a better situation. So you always want to take that time to reflect and make sure that when you do make the decision to walk away, it's a decision that is elevating you and a decision that's going to make you feel good instead of making you feel guilty or ashamed or selfish or frustrated or walking away and then being like, well, shit, I could have stayed where I was, you know? So you really want to make sure you're taking that time to reflect and figure out how are you feeling? You know, are you feeling like your friends aren't serving you anymore because you woken up one day and had this great awakening? It's like we sometimes expect everything around us to change with us and then when it doesn't we instantly want to isolate ourselves that's kind of the hardest time to be on your own because you are changing so much every day i think the biggest thing you can give yourself when there's change all around you is stability you know there is nothing like having a roll dog that's been there with you since third grade or since kindergarten that you can still call up today to give you advice or you know to make you feel loved or to make you feel you know like you have family that's loving you that's looking out for you that's supporting you that's lifting you up you know what i'm saying i think it is so important to have people in your life that can be there for you you know we all need people who love us and who lift us up and who support us and stuff like that and when we immediately cut off all of our support system we're losing the good and the bad you know because there is good and bad in all relationships and you guys know I always make sure to say whenever I'm talking about cutting people off and isolating yourself that isn't to say that you should allow people in your life that are doing you right but you want to make sure that it's the correct decision for you and that you're doing what you need in that moment like I've been in a lot of situations where I've isolated myself and then realized I don't need to be alone right now. I need my friends. I don't need to be alone right now. I need advice. I don't need to be alone right now. I need a shoulder to cry on. There is a time when isolation is good and there is a time when it can do more harm. So I definitely feel if you have friends who love you and support you and you feel like there's different ways that they can serve you or that you have reached a point where there's a disconnection in your friendship, have a conversation before you instantly isolate yourself. Let them know who you're becoming. Let them know the things you're learning. Let them know what you're working to heal and allow them to understand that the changes that you're making are so you can be a better person for you for the people around you for them you know what i'm saying if anyone loves you they're going to support you making changes to better yourself 
and to be the best version of yourself. So you want to do that and you want to let that be known. So be open to having conversations before you completely isolate yourself. That also helps you get a lot of that um, reflection and get a lot of those answers. Because let's say, for example, you decide you want to isolate yourself from, you know, like a certain um, a team. Like let's say you're on the basketball team and you are trying to focus on yourself right now so you want to focus on you your schooling you might think about changing to a different you know university or whatever so you're thinking about you know taking some time for your basketball team you could just choose to quit and say fuck y'all i worry about y'all no more i'll see y'all when i see you and leave and do that journey of discovery on your own or you can have a conversation with the people around you your teammates and let them know hey y'all i feel like this isn't working for me we practice too much we working out too much there's too many out of state events i don't have the time to dedicate to my studies i don't have the time to dedicate to my mental health you don't know you might have some people on that team that are like you know what i need the same thing let's go and talk to coach about it you know what i'm feeling the same way let's figure out how we can make this better for everybody you know a lot of answers that we are searching for can be found in the people around us and that's why they're the answers that we're searching for in the first place if that makes sense whenever you are in spaces where you need things nine times out of ten you can find the things you need from the people around you if you don't have them within yourself that's why i let people know the friends that you have around you when you're going into your awakening those people are so important in your life because they were the people around you that caused you to step into that awakening. You know, nothing is by chance. So I definitely feel reflection and conversation is definitely going to be key to just deciding, is it a space for me to even isolate myself? When you are ready to step into isolation, you definitely should feel confident about it. You should definitely feel like you understand what you're going to get out of that isolation. You definitely want to have standards and some intentions for that isolation. If you want to isolate yourself, but you know, have one day a week where you see your friends, you can do that. If you want to isolate yourself and get out once a month, you can do that. You want to figure out what's going to serve you the best and you want to figure out what's going to work the best for you. Everybody can't isolate them themselves from everyone around them and just go cold turkey you know so you really want to figure out what role are your friends and the people around you playing in your life if you want to isolate yourself from something or someone figure out what role is that playing in your life are you going to need another outlet for creativity are you going to need another outlet to make you feel comfortable are you going to need another outlet to express yourself you know what I'm saying? Because you want to make sure you're able to fill those voids. If you cut out all of the women in your life, you might have a serious void of divine feminine energy. You might seriously be lacking when it comes to, you know, sisterhood. Sisterhood is so important for women everywhere. You know, sisterhood is really, 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 really key. So just having people around you that can relate to you, people who share your struggles, people who are like you is so important. And I feel like a lot of times, we have a lot of friends around us and a lot of people around us who are just like us. In whatever space you was in, you changed, you hold it now, you done seen a light, you awaken, you a new person, that's fabulous. But you just, you were once upon a time exactly like everybody around you. It's a harsh reality, but it is the reality. You know what I'm saying? So when you decide you want to be different and you decide you want to be new, it can be very, very tricky because... I have to remove myself from everybody that I was exactly alike. And I feel like when we do that, we're really just trying to say how much we dislike the old person that we used to be. You know, I feel like a lot of times we isolate ourselves because we just want to get as far as we can from that old version of us or the old problems or the old drama. Is it really the friends? Is it really the people in the life in your life? Or is it that it's a constant reminder of all of your mistakes? Is it that it's a constant reminder of everything that you did wrong? You know, and even if that is the case, that could even be a reason for isolation. The whole point of whether you should step into isolation or not is just about being ready. You know, you want to make sure when you step into a space of isolation that you are ready to take care of you, that you are doing it with the intention of learning about yourself. You're doing it with the intention of being honest and transparent. You don't want to isolate yourself from your friends, not do no healing work, not try to be a better person, and then just try to get a whole new friend group when you haven't even done any work to unpack why you just left the last friend group. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to quit your corporate job and then try to open a million dollar company the very next day. No research, no work, no understanding, no concepts, no nothing. That's just not how it's going to work but that's how drastic a change we can step into when we isolate ourselves too quickly or too abruptly or if we just isolate ourselves from a space that we really really need you know i have gotten a lot of lessons about community in my life um, i've gotten a lot of lessons about humility in my life and one of the biggest examples of humility i feel was you know i had a girlfriend 
who was a really good friend of mine, but I always felt like this person was just so far behind me when it comes to change and release and attachment and being a better person. And there were many times in our friendship where I just stopped talking to them, I cut them off, I removed myself from them because I just felt like they weren't on my level or I just felt like I was growing away from them. It wasn't until I took the time to think about, okay, why is this person attached to these things that are not serving them? How did this person grow up? You know, what can I learn from looking at this person? How can I be a better friend to this person? Because you also want to understand that when you are friends with people and you're around people and you're in certain environments, you are going to start to reflect the environment and the people or they're going to start to reflect you. You know, that's something that my mom always told me and I'm pretty sure it's something her mom always told her. When you got people in your life, you're going to get like them or they're going to get like you. So if you feel like you're the only person that's changing in a situation, then of course, Feel free to move on and feel free to move forward. But if you feel like you're in a situation and you have people around you who are actively healing, they're actively dealing with trauma, they're actively just as confused as you are, you know, when you know better, you got to do better. You know what I'm saying? So if you have the benefit of being the friends to have the awakening, to have the answers, to have the tools, who are you to not share that with the people around you? You know, who are you to not say, hey guys, the situation is not working for me. Let's figure out how I can make this work for me. Because if it works better for me, it's going to work better for y'all you know if you guys can be a better friend of me I can be a better friend to you guys you know if my work environment supports me more I can be a better worker you know what I'm saying it's about a give and take we can't expect to change our community and our surroundings and our situations if we are in isolation but we can expect to change ourselves in isolation so if you're about to step into isolation make sure you're ready to change make sure you're ready for a total transformation from top to bottom because you want to make sure when you step out of that hermit mode people can see and understand I see why you had to take that time off or it's kind of like it's kind of like if you have a weight loss journey you know and you lose 100 pounds in six months you know and I'm pretty sure that's a little insane but let's say you did something drastic like you had you know a surgery or something or you went on a crazy diet you lost 100 pounds in six months when you see people after that six months they're gonna be like wow I see a change in you you know you are different you are new it's a completely different person people don't even recognize you that's how you want it to be when you step out of those isolation mode. If you've been in isolation for six months or even a month in isolation and you come out of that isolation and your depression is worse, your anxiety is worse, your anger is worse, you're more frustrated, you're more fed up because in that isolation you've just been stewing and getting more and more upset and more and more frustrated and been thinking about the stuff more and more and traumatizing yourself over and over again. That is not a healthy space to be in. You know, isolation is about release, it's about acceptance, and it's about doing the things that you need to do without the opinions and the energies of other people. If you feel like you can't make good decisions on your own because you're listening too much to the opinions of other people, I would definitely say, of course, have a conversation, let them know. When I tell y'all stuff, I don't want no advice. I'm not telling you for advice, I'm telling you for expression. And if I can't express to you without getting unsolicited advice, I won't express to you no more. And that's just what that's gonna be. You have to be able to find your own mind in situations like that. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to value your own voice. And that comes from spending a lot of time talking to yourself, but also having people in your life that honor you and your voice and your choices. You know, I definitely had to do that where I used to tell friends what to do. If people tell me a problem, I instantly would give them advice because I'm psychic. You know what I'm saying? I can't help it. I know exactly what you need to do to fix your life. I know the life you want. I know what's blocking you. I know how you can get started. I know how long it's going to take you. I can give you that. But everybody doesn't want that. So instead of giving advice, I always ask friends, why do you want to do it? Or how do you feel about it? Or what's next for you? Because it's not about what I want or what I need. It's about what they need. And I don't think I necessarily had any friends tell me that, but I just realized like every time my friend talks to me, I'm just giving them advice, giving them advice, giving them advice. They're not listening. And that's making me feel like they're not a good friend. That's making me feel like they're not a good person. That's making me feel like they don't want to get better. In reality, it's not my fucking business and they don't have to take my advice. You know, a lot of reasons we want to isolate ourselves can have a lot to do with our ego. We can feel like we're too good for the people around us or we know too much or they're going to get our vibration too low. Your vibration must not be that high if you get around people and it's instantly you going back to the old ways and the old habits. You know what I'm saying? Like you also want to turn the mirror on yourself. That's why we say isolation is reflection. You want to be able to look at yourself and see why is it that I can no longer 
you know, survive or grow in the space that I was in? You know, what is it about the space that I was in that was not letting me thrive? Was I not comfortable setting boundaries? Was I not comfortable speaking up over somebody? Was I not comfortable with confrontation? Was I not comfortable letting it be known when I felt disrespected or like when I felt like I was in the wrong? You also want to be open to new perspectives when you're in a space of isolation. If you're someone with a very fixed mindset and when things go down, you feel like it's this way or the highway is this way or that way is this way or no way, you might not do too well in, in isolation, especially coming out of isolation because you have to be new. You know, I isolated myself for years. I would say at least at least three or four years, I was very isolated. And by that, I meant I had the person I was in a relationship with and maybe one friend. One friend in Dallas, one friend in Baton Rouge, and that was it. I wasn't talking to nobody. I wasn't meeting no new friends. I wasn't being social. I wasn't going out. I was going to the grocery store and home, and that was it. I lived like that for like three or four years for a long time before I started take, putting myself out there meeting friends, having girls nights, having people come to my home, you know what I'm saying? I'm just now stepping out of isolation. But when I'm coming out of isolation, I had to remind myself consistently to be a new friend, to be a new person, to be a new version of myself. You can't spend three or four years in isolation and come out and be thinking the same, talking the same, acting the same, reacting the same. What was the point of the isolation? That's why intention is so critical and it's so critical to be real with yourself. You don't wanna feel like you have to isolate yourself because everybody is bad and everybody is rude and everybody isn't on your level. You wanna feel like you have to isolate yourself because it's time for you to get better. It's time for you to get healed. It's time for you to understand things differently. Hear yourself, hear your own voice, reconnect with God, reconnect with your higher self, find your gifts, You know, find what works for you and what doesn't. That is a space in isolation. That's what you're supposed to do in isolation. It's not a time for you to get madder and madder about what happened because you're, you keep thinking about the same thing over and over and over again, not looking for any other outcomes or any other you know, um, finish lines. You're just regurgitating the same shit over and over and over again. It's not the space for that. It's not a space for you to put yourself down and make yourself feel insecure because you feel like I'm alone, I'm lonely, nobody wants me, nobody wants to be with me. You know, it's not for that either. You want to make sure that you're in the right state of mind to step into isolation. And if you are in a space of isolation and you didn't want to be there, like let's say your friend stopped talking to you or you lost your job or you had to, you know, move somewhere and then you got dumped or whatever the case may be, for whatever reason, if you are forced into isolation, you have to ask yourself, am I happy here? If you are not happy in isolation, then get out the house, go to the mall, go out to eat, go meet people, go out, get on these apps, get on social media, go to networking events, check Eventbrite in your area. You don't have to be in isolation. You get to decide how you want to connect with people and if you want to have friends, if you want to be around people or not. That's what you get to choose. And if you feel like you're in a space where you can't think for yourself, if you feel like you're in a space where everyone is negatively affecting you and they aren't open to change, if you feel like in your, you're in a space where you aren't even comfortable speaking up for yourself, if you feel like you're in a space where you don't even know how to set a boundary, then it definitely would be good to kind of, you know, take a step back for a little bit and get reconnected with you. Isolation is about reconnecting with you so you can come out of that space stronger protecting yourself more, taking care of yourself more. It's kind of like being in a spiritual boot camp. You know, you really want to think of it as you putting yourself through like a detox or a mentorship or a retreat. You know, you are putting yourself through the ringer. You are unlearning and relearning and discovering and throwing stuff away and picking stuff up and you might rearrange your home or, you know, rearrange what you want to do for a career, rearrange your goals for family in isolation. It's supposed to be a space for change. It's supposed to be where we close the doors on the old house, we renovate, we get everything nice and hooked up and then we invite everybody back in or we invite new people back in, you know. The goal of isolation isn't to be isolated for the rest of your life. The goal of isolation is to get comfortable with isolation, is to understand the purpose and the power of isolation because we always say isolation is required for elevation and that is the motherfucking truth. There is nothing like spending time working on you dedicating that time to work on you that will boost your confidence it'll make you trust yourself more it'll make you trust your voice more it will make you believe in yourself more it will completely change how you view yourself how you feel about yourself how you feel about other people how you see other people whenever you see people isolating themselves you'll be able to understand them and relate to them more and help them out a lot more a lot of times people can't support you because they don't even know how to support themselves you know i'm able to give people tough love and i'm able to give y'all tough love because i give myself tough love Every single day, I give myself tough boot camp major pain love every day. 
because that's what I need and because it works, you know. I have to find out what I need and I definitely did that through isolation. Um, but it wasn't easy, you know. I had a lot of regret about friendships that I walked away from and people that I, you know, left behind. I feel out of all those friendships I've lost, there probably is only like one that I kind of regret or wish that there could have been a conversation because I understand in the grand scheme of things, um, there wasn't really much that could have been done. And that's something that you kind of realize in isolation too what spaces you couldn't really have done anything in and i feel like that makes it easier because isn't it easier to walk away from a relationship knowing i've done all i can do i tried to fix it and it didn't work i know for a fact now with the knowledge i have now they would have never been right for me i would have never been able to fix it just like when you leave a relationship and you have to go back and ask yourself they would have never changed for me i wasn't enough to ever make them happy it would have never happened that really gives you the security and the, the push and the motivation to move forward and create new relationships because you're able to understand it might not have been me. It wasn't about me. You know, I don't have to isolate myself. I feel like sometimes we isolate ourselves for punishment as well. If you feel like you're toxic, if you feel like you're the problem, if you feel like you're the drama, you can definitely isolate yourself because you feel like I'm only going to hurt people. I'm only going to confuse people. I'm only going to make people uncomfortable. I don't want to be around anybody. I want to save everybody from me. But that's not healthy as well because you are valuable and people need your friendship. People need your advice. People need your energy. They need your love. So who are you to say that they don't? Who are you to hold your love and your energy hostage? You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do that. You want to give people what you are supposed to give them. And if you are here, you have a purpose. You have a community somewhere that is looking for you. And isolation is a really big part of navigating your own journey into finding your own purpose and your own role as to who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to give to people and how you're supposed to elevate them and teach them and help them grow and how they're supposed to do the same for you. You know, I kind of feel like we all have books, you know, like imagine your life from birth to death being a book. You know, we all have books of our lives, different chapters, different traumas, different pain. You might know everybody else's book, but do you know your own? You know, do you know what's caused you to be this way? Do you know what's caused you to feel the way you feel? Do you know what trauma you're holding on to? Do you know what you haven't healed? Do you know what's ancestral? Do you know what's issues that your mom has dealt with and your grandma and now you are dealing with it? You know what I'm saying? Do you really know yourself? Front, back to cover. Because I know myself very well. That's why I don't give a fuck about what nobody got to say. I know my intentions. I know what my goals are. I know what my heart is. I know who I am. And the power of knowing who you are, no one can ever tell you who you are. You know what that means? People cannot gaslight you. They don't have that power over you. People cannot tell you that you are not worthy. They don't have that power. People cannot tell you what you deserve or what you meant or what you did to them because they don't have that power over you. You have the power over you. And you should. We all should have power over our own lives. We should not be moving off of other people's judgment and other people's words and what other people think they know. The only person that gets to change or alter your worth or what you deserve is you. You get to tell yourself what you are worthy of. You get to tell yourself what you are deserving of. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else can do that. And we want that to be clear. Like we want to let that be known. Like if ain't nothing known, we want to let that be known. And getting that confident in yourself sometimes takes isolation. And if you have spent some rough times in isolation, and I'm sure you can agree, you know, coming on the outside of that, you know more about yourself than you would have ever known if you would have stayed in those spaces. It really is a beautiful space to be in. It changes so much and lets you see so much, but you really have to be mentally ready for being in that space because it is hard. It can be very dark. It can be very dreary. We can feel very lonely, but just because you're alone, it doesn't mean you're lonely. You always have God. You always have your answer ancestors, your spirit guides, and your soul family is out there. There are friends out there for you, but sometimes you just got to get yourself together on your own before you step into that next space. So just see it as that. I'm just getting myself together right now. It's not a big deal. And like I said, when you're isolating yourself, you don't have to completely shut off everybody in your life. You can do what works for you and you want to find places that people can be in your life. Like, I don't want to talk to you every day as a friend, but I'll hit you up on a weekend and I'll check in with you periodically. I might not want to see you every day, family, but I'll see y'all on the weekends and I love y'all and I'm going to keep it cute and I'm going to pray for y'all from a distance. You know what I'm saying? You get to decide that. But it can be very frustrating to make those decisions when you have everybody putting in their input about where they want to be in your life and who they want to be in your life. You know what I'm saying? So 
set intentions for your isolation. And if you are isolated right now, if you're feeling isolated right now, then go ahead and set some intentions. What do you want this next chapter of isolation to look like for you? What do you need to learn? What do you need to discover? And what are you willing to do to figure it out? Are you willing to be very transparent? Are you willing to journal about it every day? Are you willing to talk about it every day? Are you willing to be open about it until it doesn't ruin your day anymore? Until it doesn't knock you off your ass for a week? Until you're able to own up and be open and strong and accept all the things you've experienced because they have brought you to this point. And now understanding these things, accepting these things without the outside opinions, you know, and, and, and rah-rah from other people can really allow you to create your own opinions. And those opinions will get strong and get solid the more and more you think about those things and the more and more you find evidence on your own to support those opinions. So I definitely think, like I said, isolation is such an important space to be in. I really feel I isolate. I really feel isolation can give you tools and insight that you will not get from anybody else. You know, and a lot of what you guys love about me, me being real, me being transparent, and you just feeling my I don't give a fuck what anybody gotta say because I know God loves me and I know I'm good. You feeling that energy, okay? That's what you love, that's what you want, you know what I'm saying? And I gained that. Not entirely through isolation, but isolation was a big part of me reconnecting with God and me figuring out who I am and figuring out who God wants me to be. And like I said, it can really, really change your life, of course, but there is a way to do it. We want to make sure we're stepping into spaces from the jump from with the mindset of, I want this to elevate me. Not, I hate everybody, fuck everybody. Because that's not the type of energy we want to be carrying, you know? We want to step into every space with beautiful, light, healing energy and with the right intention. So... Yeah, guys, that is the tea about isolation. And I hope it just puts some things in perspective for you about when is the right time to isolate, how you should go about isolating yourself from anyone or anything that you need to, and how you can just continuously grow and find more and more about who you are every single day um, with others or, you know, on your own. So, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate y'all as always, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bless.